Well, hey, how's it going? I hope that you are doing good today. It's good over here. Went to work today, just got made something to eat, and I just wanted to get on here and see if anybody wanted to pray with me and read some of God's word, be encouraged by his word. Just let the Lord speak to us. We know when we come together, two of us like this, seeking him, that he's going to speak to us. And Lord, our hearts are open to receive what you have for us right now, God. We know all scripture is breathed out by you, Lord, used for training and godliness, for correction, um, to show us how to respond in every circumstance the way that you want us to, Lord. When we read the word, we see how much you love us, Lord. We see the true nature of God in your word and the way you interact with your people. So we just want to continue to read it, continue to get to know you more and get, continue to get to know your ways, the ways that you want us to live better. We want to live according to your word, Lord. We want to please you. Look what you've done for us, Lord. You sent your son to die for our sins, took all of our sins on the cross, and we're just so grateful, Lord, that we can be righteous before you because of that. But you said if you confess your sins, he is faithful. You are faithful, Lord, to cleanse us from all wickedness, from all unrighteousness. And we're so grateful for that, Lord. We thank you for the gift of repentance that no matter what we're doing, we can turn around at any time, right this second, right now. And as soon as we actually mean that with our heart, everything changes. And there's freedom in that. So we thank you, Lord, and we just pray that you would speak to us as we read your word right here. Thank you, Lord. That's what we want to do is hear from you. Thank you for your presence, God. So yeah, I had a good day at work today. I had a rough week though. Made a bad decision last week and led to more bad decisions. And when I mess up, I mess up um, badly. So I'm grateful to be back repentant and, and on the right track again. You know, the enemy wants to, well, first of all, you know, the Lord uses these mess, uh, you know, he turns that mess He's working all things together for our good. He turns that mess into a message, that test into a testimony. So even when we screw up, it can be used for good. And I noticed mine already being used for good um, today. I was at work. I just got talking, got done talking with a friend on the phone. I put my phone in my pocket when I was done. And when I picked it back out, I forgot to like lock up my phone. I pocket dialed this guy, this friend of mine. He has a, um, he has a ministry too. And uh, he didn't answer my calls. Um, but he texted back and he said, Hey, don't send me any money. I messed up, man. I messed up five days ago. I thought that was really odd. He wasn't even, I mean, you knew it was the Lord because he wasn't on any of my top uh, people that I had talked to recently or anything. It just so happened to pocket dial him. We, you know, I was heading down the wrong path there right at the same time he was. I had sent him money a couple of times. That's why he said, don't send it. Don't send me any money. I'm not doing well. And I thought it was just a perfect opportunity for me to sit because I know how he must have been feeling like my thing's over now. You know, how am I going to do anything for the Lord now that I'm here? But I had already been there. You know, I've already screwed up on here and came back on and said, I messed up. You know, we all mess up and we all fall short of the glory of God. And the devil wants nothing more for us to for us to quit talking about the Lord, thinking that we have no right to do so because we mess up. But it's absolutely not the case. You know, he knows too. If we quit doing the Lord's will, we're not going to be happy either. He'll, he'll kill two birds with one stone right there. So, um, but yeah, I just thought it was cool how the Lord used that mess up right away. You know, I wish I had a testimony that said I came to the Lord and I never had another problem again after that it's all been good but it just ain't like that we have the choice all the time whether to walk in the flesh or with the spirit and uh, like I said we all we all fall short when I fall short I fall really short and it's really noticeable 
And so, um, so yeah, I thank the Lord for his, for his forgiveness towards us. But yeah, the enemy says you're done. You know that the Lord don't want to use you, but there ain't no such thing as a Christian that ain't being used. That ain't being vocal. We've all been given a ministry of reconciliation. We've all been given the title as ambassador. He doesn't pull that title away when we mess up. He doesn't pull away the title of royal priesthood or chosen one or elect. His prized possession. He doesn't pull all that back. He doesn't pull his spirit back. The gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. He doesn't pull the calling back. He doesn't pull the gifts back. The King James says, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. He doesn't take those back. The Lord says uh, in 2 Chronicles 7, 13 through 16, this is when Solomon built the temple. They said that prayer or whatever. At time, at, at, this is the Lord speaking. At times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls or command grasshoppers to devour your crops or send plagues among you. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and, and restore their land. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. For I have chosen this temple and set it apart to be holy, a place where my name will be honored forever. I always watch over it for it is dear to my heart. So, um, so he's saying, yeah, if you, if you turn from your ways and come back, your land will be healed. What does land being healed mean? I mean, I don't think it means our finances are going to be in order and our relationships will be good. No, we're still going to have things going on, but he's going to be with us. He's going to heal the land like he's going to be with us. And uh, we're going to do, yeah, we're going to have his favor in our lives and things. We're going to prosper because of because of him in our life. He's just waiting for us to turn and come back. But of course, he still is going to use us. Leaders are held to a higher higher standard. People that are local. But but yeah, he wants, he wants to use us all. He's calling on us all now. People are making excuses, you know, or don't feel like they're ready for whatever reason. Um... But the Lord, this is what the Lord said when those, uh, um, talking about people following him. As they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to even lay his head. He said to another person, come, follow me. The man agreed, but he said, Lord. First, let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. Another said, yes, Lord, I will follow you. But first, let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Luke 9, 57 through 62. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, we make excuses as well why we can't go right now. You know, we're not ready or we want to do this first or let me get my life together first and then I'll follow you. That ain't what the Lord is saying. He's calling us right now. Don't look back. There's a godly sorrow, you know, when we do wrong. We feel that. That's good. It's good to feel bad for a minute about what we've done and reflect on that. But, but that isn't something that we're supposed to hang on to. Anything... Anything that's keeping you from being, from getting back into things is of, is of the enemy. It's guilt from the enemy. There's no condemnation in Christ. Christ is saying, okay, you're forgiven. You've changed your ways. Let's go. Let's go. Don't look back. Paul said, Paul talked about forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. That's Philippians 3, 13 and 14. If I didn't say the other one, he who puts his hand to the plow, that's Luke 9, uh, 62. But um, yeah, two verses that are very, well, the one, especially those who put their hand to the plow and look back ain't fit for the kingdom. I'm fit, you know. I, that's why I always tell the Lord I'm ready for, for a guy that screws up a lot. That scripture has been so 
so helpful for me. I just picture the Lord saying, like, let's go, you know, forget about it. You're forgiven. Let's go. Do, you know, we do what we can to make right with the people that we did wrong or, or whatever and, and just be humbled by the situation, but then just moving forward. Um, but, yeah, the Lord's got a, a calling on each one of our lives, and, and um, yeah, we need to do that. There's a lot of people out there that need to be saved. Still, our family members that don't have a relationship with God, he could come back tonight. You know, are you ready for your family? You know, are you gonna, are we going to be going to heaven thinking, man, I wish I would have done more? Are we going to say like, yeah, I did everything that I could. I tried to follow the Lord. I did my best. You know, that's what I want to be able to say. I did my best to those around me within, you know, I did what I could. So anyway, Lord, we thank you for your, for your forgiveness, Lord. We're thankful that you're calling us forward right now, no matter what we've done. And we can turn from our sins and you cleanse us from all unrighteousness, God. You blot out the transgressions of those that are repentant. And we thank you for the gift of repentance, Lord. And we want to see people saved, God. We want to see people coming to you. We want to... It's not that we just don't want them to go to hell. We don't want them to be in the hell that they're in right now, Lord. People in misery and stuff because they, because they don't know about you yet. Or they just backslid. And, and so... Um, so thank you, Lord, that the gifts and the callings are irrevocable, Lord, that you... You're just so good, Lord. You don't call the qualified. You qualify the call. Yeah, he already knows we're going to screw up before we even screw it up. Like, it's not like he's going to be, like, using you and then be like, oh, he messed up. Now he's done, you know, or whatever. Um, or she or whatever. So, anyway. Um, but thank you, Lord, for that. And I just ask you to bless my friend right here in Jesus' name. Thank you for reading with me. Thank you for praying with me. You have a good one. All right, bye.